Before we get started, hit like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Ding! Today, we have lots of surprises. Well, thank you for that amazing introduction, Miraculous Girl. And today, we're going to take a look at a Victoria Knox... Uh, knife. This is a little bit larger uh, than our regular ones, uh, so I think it would be appropriate to use a larger Swiss Army knife to open it up and take a look at it. And we're going to do a couple of different things here. This is a uh, Ranger grip. Um, this particular <clears throat> one, I, I I'll have to insert in the uh, the model number on this one. A couple of little special features on this one. I really like the Ranger grips and I have a few of them. I don't have <laughs> them all. There are quite a, quite a few different variations of it. Um, this one has, and well, let's go ahead and, and, and go over all of it before I just get into uh, one thing here. I'll start one thing at a time. First of all, we have uh, a couple of scale tools. We have the famous tweezers. And toothpick. Now these are in the bottom, I'm going to call it the bottom side. They're both on the same side. Uh, there are no scale tools on the front side there, on the back side. Uh, you also have a, a key ring. Now this uh, one has more of a rubberized texture in the blackened areas. is a lot rubberized texture and the other part is the harder style plastic. Uh, obviously this one is the black and green as opposed to the regular um, red colored ones and next we have a few other tools here you have the cap lifter standard screwdriver uh, wire stripper wire bender um, in the one end this does not have a 90 degree stop uh, one of my subscribers had told me the 90 degree stop, I guess on the Alox ones, it's always been there and then they added it in later at different times on different models. Uh, like I said, this one does not have it at all. Uh, on this side, you have your can opener and micro tip screwdriver. And on your back scale, kind of bouncing around here, you have a Phillips screwdriver, a standard Phillips. There is no pinhole or anything like that. And this is going to be a T-grip style Phillips on there. Uh, I kind of like it better when it comes out straight. It makes it easier to use in certain areas. Uh, you have, and there's a lot of oil on this one, uh, but you have your punch, reamer, all, call it different things, with a sewing eye. Let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Back to our main tools. We have the saw. This is quite a bit longer than your saws on the 91 millimeter knives and the uh, Alox 93 millimeter knives. Um, and even larger than your ones on the, what is it, 111 millimeter knives. Uh, Great saws on these things, they work fantastic. And then finally, we have our main blade. 
Now, this has a cutout in it, so you can one-handed open that very easily. It does lock into place. I've never had, it's a very solid lock. It goes all the way in. It's pretty much the whole base of the blade there. This particular model is partially serrated. Uh, that looks like, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, there's no edge right here. Then you have serrations. I want to say that's probably maybe 60% serrated. Um, if I can find some literature that, that gives that information, I'll, I'll insert it at the bottom here. Uh, and then you have your edge at the top. Looks like there's some miscellaneous. Looking for a cloth on her. A lot of oil on here. This particular knife had a lot of oil in there. Um, which I'll end up re-oiling it here and I'll explain why. Uh, this blade does have a little like jimping cut out on the back part of this for when you're holding it. Right there. Um, kind of finger guard, stop, thumb guard up there at the top. Um, I like these knives. Now, like I said, this is a, a lockback. I have never really reviewed any of these here on the channel before. Uh, and the way you release this lockback, and my very first one, I was like, how do, how do you do this? Uh, it's in the shield. Uh, you press on the shield, and that releases it pushes the lock down for you to close it. So, now I'm going to also <coughs> do a modification on this. A lot of people don't know this, but all of your uh, Ranger Grip knives have a cutout in their scale. They use the same scale uh, for a uh, for a hex bit driver. Uh, you see that right, right there. And they all have it. So I'm going to pop off this scale and uh, I'm gonna do that. And what I, I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna put this in some, just prior, just that the bubbles are forming hot water to soften the scale just enough to pop this off. I'm going to try and do it on the camera here. And then uh, I'll do some speed up film because it'll take a few minutes to cut out the hex area on here and show how uh, that is all done. Anyway, so we'll get started on that now. So I'm just using a standard kitchen pot. Uh, as soon as this water starts just starting to form bubbles, I'm going to uh, plop this down in there for about 45 seconds. I'll take it off the heat when I do that. You got to be really careful. I've done it quite a few times now. You got to be real careful. You don't want to leave it in uh, for more than about 45 seconds or so once you get the water heated up. Uh, because it will, you can warp your scales. Uh, and I'm not going to film, because I'm holding the camera here over the stove. Uh, I'm not going to film while I do this. I'll use some tongs to pull it out, and then I'm going to use some gloves. And, and very quickly, and I will film it, very quickly I will pop the scales off uh, when I do that. But I'm just going to put this in this pan uh, for, like I said, about 45 seconds. Uh, the water's almost at that point where I'm going to go ahead and insert it in there. And that's just to kind of soften the plastic up enough so that uh, you can uh, pop the scale off without breaking the plastic. Because uh, that's your main goal is to pop that scale off without breaking the uh, areas where it attaches back onto the main part of the knife. When I bring the knife back, 
uh, out of the pan after it's been in there for about 45 seconds. Uh, I'm going to use my 84 millimeter uh, watch maker to get under the scale and and snap it off. Uh, I will be using some uh, hot gloves so that I can hold the the knife while uh, because it's going to be really hot. Okay, so the knife has been in the water for about 45 seconds. Uh, and we are now going to pop this scale off real quick. Uh, it is very hot. And before I start working on it, I, I will let it cool down. For those of you that want to know what it looks like on the inside, you are about to see. And there you go. And you'll see I popped it off. Uh, there's no traces of any of the plastic on the insides of the, the rivets here. So this is going to go back on very, very nicely. Now, as you can see, you have the cutout here in the in the back spring it's in the it's in the back spring under the knife and it's in the scale all of them have it and it actually has a cutout on the inside of the scale where that hex hole is so that popped off really nice we're going to dry this out uh dry that out We'll dry this out. Uh, I'm going to do some time lapse because it does take a little time. Although I'm going to do something I normally I will take an X-Acto knife and I will use an X-Acto knife just to cut around that slowly but surely. And then uh, a file to uh, get it all back together. My scales did not warp. Excellent. I'm going to want to dry it out. Probably reapply a little bit of oil back on the blades. And like I said, as I when I start doing the cutting on this, I will um, definitely get as much of the water out as I can. Now you could probably use some sort of an, uh, a hair dryer or heat gun or something to also heat up the plastic a little bit. The main thing is, is you want to be careful. You just want to get it slightly heated because uh, you don't want your scales to warp. Uh, in all of my popping of scales, I've had one that I left in just a hair too long and my scale kind of started to warp and buckle then you got to kind of try and heat it back up to get it to think so that's uh you can see how the locking mechanism works in there how it pops out uh all very very interesting so we're going to set that aside because this is the piece that we're going to work on uh you're going to need a you can i'm like i said i'm going to use a dremel for part of this this time, uh, I'm going to not talk so you don't hear a bunch of because I will speed it up because it is time consuming uh, as I do this. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of try and film as much of the procedure of me doing it as possible. Uh, so this is really cool. Uh, I've never seen anyone do this in I've, I, I've watched it in some uh, uh, where they were speaking German or something. Um, the person that the very first time I ever saw this and how I discovered it and uh, I'm just passing along what I've done to you guys. So first thing I'm going to do here <clears throat> I have a variable speed Dremel. I don't want to go too fast because that'll just melt the plastic. 
I'm just drilling a hole right in the middle. Now, I will do some fine uh, work. Now, I'm going to take this bit out and go to a side cutting bit. I'll try to keep this in frame as much as possible here as I do this. We're just enlarging this hole. up to the edges and then I'll probably trim it with an exacto knife when I get real close to the edges. Now this is the first time I've ever done this with a Dremel. As you can see, I'm still got a little ways to go, but it's better to go slow and take it away in small sections at a time than it is to try and do it fast because once you take it off, you can't put it back. Maybe touch that up with a little, I don't know, it's really hard to get sandpaper in there. The filed surface is pretty smooth. I'm on the fence as to whether or not using a Dremel or just using an X-Acto knife and slowly cutting which one is easier or better. You got to be real careful with that Dremel because uh, you can melt the plastic and take too much off. All of my pieces are very well intact on the inside in there. A lot of people just pop the scales on and off all the time. I don't know. The knife is very dry. We got it all dry in there. So 
I think we're about ready to put this all back together, which we will do here momentarily. So we are still sanding away here with the files, kind of just smoothing this out a little bit. Miraculous Girl's over to the side here doing her homework while I sand this at this point. So at this point, that's what it looks like. And I think we're ready <coughs> to snap this back on here. But before I do that, I'm going to just put a little bit of this uh, Victoria Knox oil. in this since I did dunk it in the water and we'll work these just a drop you don't need a lot it actually had a lot on it and a little bit of water probably it's not going to cause too many problems All right, and sometimes you might need a set of pliers to clamp this down with, and other times not so much. It'll just snap right back on. I'm going to try and see if this will just snap right back on. And I pretty much think it is. I wonder if these will fit. Nope, they don't. Didn't think they would. presses right back on there and now as you see we now have a quarter inch hex bit socket and uh, I'm going to clean up here and show you where how we uh, some of the what, what I usually keep nearby uh, with this whenever I take one of these out. I'm also going to do a quick uh, blade cut test and stuff I didn't do initially on this. Uh, we'll cut some paracord and some paper and whatnot uh, on this serrated edge uh, also. so uh, Didn't mention, says Victoria Knox right there on the blade on the one side. And this side says, what does it say? Swiss made stainless is up on this side over here. I don't know but the light reflection. Um, if you can see it there. Anyway, all right, so uh, 
Let's get some bits here. Take a peek at how this works. So as promised here, here's a final look. I got my workspace all cleaned up. So now you can see in here and the, like I said, the cutouts for this are all the way through uh, this liner and the second liner because I can see all the way through to the teeth on the saw in this and the cutouts are also in the back scales a portion of the back scales are also cut out and as far as I know every uh, Ranger grip um, Swiss Army knife has the scale mold has the cutout for this uh, bit here now I have this little DeWalt bit set that I keep around, but this is a standard hex drive style, and it's pretty cool because you can uh, you can put in here, and that one's a little tight for some reason on one side. You can put the uh, any standard, and this is just an extender here, but you can put any standard uh, hex bit uh, in these, and you know, so you've really expanded your abilities and because of the size of this when you're turning on something uh, even using sockets and whatnot you you've you've really expanded your abilities of this tool by having that I do this little modification on every one of my Ranger grips um, and I I think I have like three or four now. Uh, I forget exactly. But, um, and like I said, at first I thought only certain models had it, and then I found out they all had it. So, one last, one last thing. And, by the way, this was the Ranger Grip Model 178 uh, with the partially serrated blade in the green-black. Uh... And I don't know if all the 178s are serrated or not. I really don't think they are. So, we'll do some little... Wow, okay. <laughs> In my most recent cut test, I have to say that was pretty... On the slice, that serration is... Unbelievable. All right, we'll do a quick pull through. I might have to grab some more paracord here. It goes through pretty easy. Oh, no, this will be enough to do one more, I think. This going through so easy, I don't even have to have a very good grip on that to do that. Um, the tip, that fine edge. And finally, I don't know how well the serrations are going to work on a paper test. Uh, well, that answers that question. The serrations kind of make it a little weird on the paper test, but... I mean, I know these serrations are sharp. When you get down to that fine edge, it just slices right through too. I'm not using the whole length of it. So, that is a look at the Ranger Grip 178 and a uh, little demonstration on how to modify it and make it a more versatile tool, at least in my opinion. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Give us a like, give us a subscribe, and remember be nice to each other.